All right, at this time I'd like to call the July 26, 2018 work session of the Coffee County Board of Education uh, to order. This time, Dr. Mike Steve Williams here. Sure. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for today. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for letting us come together this afternoon to have a work session pertaining to the situations and needs of our school system. I ask Father God to direct every leader, every person involved in the meeting tonight, let us speak the best of our abilities that we make decisions that will impact the lives of our students. And I ask Father God that all stakeholders in our community that they will have one of the best years yet coming up in this 18-19 school year. And I pray, Father God, for the students. I pray that their frame of mind will be on academics and extracurricular activities, that they will be doing great things as we continue to embark upon the leadership that we need in Coffee County. I ask also, Father God, that you bless our superintendent, strengthen all of our board members, everyone, uh, staff members of our system, classified and certified. Let us continue to strive for the advancement of our lives as we do the right things to impact leadership and also school learning for the Coffee County school system. This is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus Christ's most holy and righteous name. Amen. 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 Thank you. At this time, I need a motion on the adoption of the agenda. We won't have a chance to look at it. Motion to adopt the agenda. Motion by Mr. Jowers. Second. Second, Ms. Miller. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you. We have uh, the minutes from the previous board meetings last month, the June meetings that have been posted over the last few days. You've had a chance to review them. Are there any questions about those minutes? If there's no changes that need to be made, we will post those on the consent agenda for the regular monthly meeting following this work session. Out of state travel, we have one out of state trip to Crossville, Tennessee, the 4-H. We'll be taking a group of high school students to the state and national competition. That meets the pleasure of the board. We'll place that on the consent agenda for the right meeting. Monthly financial reports. We have the July. Keep in mind this is tentative. We will be posting this as part of our end of year financial report in a couple of months. So this is a tentative. End of month fund equity of $12,153,539.77. We also have a July East Boss report. You'll see our revenue was just below where we were last year, down a little bit. And we ended five straight months of positive reports. So the next month they'll be back up. Any questions about that? It's consistent. Tax Digest, Millage Rate. We were pleased to get the Tax Digest and we apologize to the board. Uh, we posted that uh, a few hours prior to this meeting. Uh, it was made available to us. The county, of course, was having to work on it on their end and between the county and the tax assessor's office. And billing office they were able to get this put together and, and sent to us in time for our meeting. You'll notice that we are going to ask the board to roll back taxes this year. We'll roll back the millage 
and accept the, the rollback would be my recommendation at this point. That may be a little premature, but uh, you know, look at it, see that we would go from 16.093 to 16.036. Revenue is up. That's a good thing. So even with the rollback, we still increase our taxes. Maybe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's. Uh, I think there was a property that came out of abatement. It's an industrial type property that no longer is under abatement, and, and we'll pick up some property taxes from there. It's a good sign for our local economy. Yes, sir. Uh, there was a meeting there with Mr. Vickers and I asked him, he said that the, I think he said, but I hadn't seen it because just now it was up about 4%. And I asked him what it was and he said premium orders came on the tax roads this year. But the other good thing was uh, he said building permits are up so much in the county. Mm -hmm. So he was just talking about that's such a good sign of growth for our local yes, economy. Is the taxes went up on the county? Yes, sir. Sue, is that the your recollection? Is that the first time real and personal property has been over a billion dollars in Canada? The big one was uh, the Correction Corporation of America. Bigger than that. Oh, on the, the million. On the real and sure. personal. Yeah. Yeah, you're ahead of me. Uh, uh, you might be right, bro. I'm just curious. I didn't. <laughs> Over a billion. Looking at that trend. Yeah, I've seen that a growth. It is. So yeah, going on back, you see 2013. Good sign because we were going the other way. Any questions about the tax digest? Uh, we'll ask the board to allow us to advertise this tax digest uh, the newspaper, and then we'll come back to the board at our next monthly meeting for formal adoption of the millage. We have a motion to. Uh, well, we'll just place on this All right. So we're not actually voting on the agenda, we're going to the millage, we're just uh, That's right. advertising. We're just advertising. <coughs> Ms. Leola, good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. So glad you could come. <laughs> <laughs> Is everybody good with the, <laughs> with the millage rate? Miss Johnson, we were just pointing out that the millage, uh, we're yeah. going to lower the millage rate, which is lowering taxes, but uh, revenue will be up. That's a good thing. And and we did talk about it earlier, Miss Young and myself, that it's a little deceiving because our, our budget is, is we need we need that funding for our budget. And then also, uh, we receive uh, funding from the state equalization funding because we are a, a, a fairly high poverty school district as compared to a lot of your other counties, we received equalization funding and that equalization funding is tied to your millage rate. And so any any large shift in your millage could uh, affect your, your equalization negatively. So while, while the tax digest is positive, it could affect our millage I mean, our equalization in a negative way down the road. So we just always want to be cautious. We get too overly optimistic or uh, with those types of swings. Um, all right, East Plus resolution. We have talked about the East Plus resolution dating back to February at our retreat. We started talking about it in the last board meeting. We presented those list of priorities and then we sent those list of priorities to the uh, bond attorneys and Mr. Uh, 
Cottingham has also been working with the bond attorneys and Ms. Young and Frank King and Morgan Keegan and Pinnell, John Pinnell out of Savannah, the bond attorney, and Mr. Cottingham will be corresponding back and forth. We've got the ballot ready to present to the board and ask the board to approve the resolution to place this on the ballot in November. <coughs> It's very similar to our last East Floss, and keep in mind this is a continuation of East Floss. This is not an additional tax. This would just be a continuation of our current East Floss. The terms are very similar. We put a $35 million cap on it. That means that's as much as we can collect. The previous Floss, we had a $32 million cap, but we thought we would go up because the local economy is, is turning for a positive. But uh, we, we've never reached that cap anyways, but you have to put one, so we moved it up a little bit in case all of a sudden we did have a major industry moving to town and there was uh, more revenue. And then we left the $20 million, uh, as potential for bonding uh, that we could bond if we needed to. That was the same amount we put in the last clause, but we bonded $15 million in the last clause and did not use the entire 20. So terms of it are very similar to our last East Floss. The project list and the ballot question, exhibit A1 on that page, you'll find the what will actually be on the ballot that voters will be asked to decide on. On November 6, 2018, an election will be held in Coffee County to submit to the qualified voters of the Coffee of Coffee County the following question. Shall a 1% sales and use tax for educational purposes be imposed in the Coffee County School District for a period of time not to exceed 20 consecutive calendar quarters and for raising of not more than $35 million for the purposes of funding the following capital outlay projects. One, constructing, equipping, and furnishing of one or more new facilities including an ROTC multi-purpose facility at Coffee High School acquired and installing system-wide security improvements. So, Board members, you were very adamant that we wanted to make sure we could construct an ROTC multi-purpose facility, so that is one, and then two, acquiring and installing system-wide security improvements. That's a priority for school districts all over the country, uh, and so we'll certainly have that at the top of our list, or second on our list, to uh, make sure we get done, and we will be moving forward with that work. Acquiring textbooks, including e-books, Acquiring, improving, and installing technology upgrades, both hardware and software. Acquiring, installing, and improving camera systems. Acquiring school buses and other vehicles and school equipment. Adding to, renovating, modifying, improving, and equipping interior and exterior of school buildings and athletic facilities, including completion of the Performing Arts Center. Acquiring band instruments and equipment. Acquired any capital property necessary or desirable for the foregoing and related purposes, both real and personal. And that will be the question to voters. And this has to be published 90 days prior to the November 6th election. That means it has to be published by the end of July. This has got to go to publish. Mr. Cottingham has the papers that will be signed after this meeting uh, to send back to the bond attorneys and to the, the Board of Elections. Do what now? This is going to be run by when? By the end of this month. Actually, it'll be next week's paper. Right? Yeah. That will see it. Get some research and um, Mr. King, there's two, let's see. Normally, you have you do it 30 days before this. I mean, the resolution says they would run it five weeks immediately before the That election. will be. We'll start again. Uh, the election's off the floor. We have that, we, you have to have a call, and that has to be uh, 90 days before. So it'll run that. I'll get Mr. Peavy to sign it probably tomorrow or Monday, put it in the Enterprise Thursday, and that's your 90 days. It's going to be the same notice that's at the end, and then the school board will just have the notice of election run really four times, but we run it five times, and that'll be in October 
July, in, uh, uh, October, and maybe the last week in September. Anyway, four four Thursdays before. Uh, so we have to run it, and, and the election office has to run yeah, it. Yeah, it's called a uh, it's called a call of the election. It's ninety days before, and something called. That's medicine. what we're doing tonight. Well, yeah, y'all are both doing the call of the election, and actually, right, you're making the call of the election. That uh, if it's you're adopting that resolution, it'll be run both next week, just one time, and five times. Uh, probably last week in September and all through October. So we got to run it five. I'm yeah. just trying to get clear because I didn't see it in here, but we had to. If you look at the last page, it says run 90 days before. That's really. I saw that. That's technically the call of the election that, that Mr. Peavy is responsible for running. Because we pay for it, he don't send it to us. But this is because it's a general election. Normally, we don't have to do it for 30, so we don't have to pay for anything. And then uh, for the actual notice of the election, will be done. I think the dates are specified in there. We put them very neat. So we don't necessarily have to run a budget or nothing in the top of the list. No, that's your, that's what's, uh, back up, Mr. Doc Lees. That's yes, what, sir. That's the, uh, can you run on that? I can't. Can question, go back up to the questions. That would right, yeah, that's what will be on the ballot right there, Mr. Yeah. Howard. Uh, yes or no, no. Those two, par yeah, three paragraphs. Well, that's all going to be on the ballot so we can actually take if we collect 35 million we spend it any way we want to pretty much i mean we can spend it all on one project or several that what you say it this way that's a very very broad <laughs> it I doesn't say yeah, i don't necessarily want it that broad I, myself well i'm just saying that's a very broad resolution we didn't obligate to do like we did on nickel school and the fine art center, the performing art center. Uh, but this is saying at a minimum, y'all are going to do security and uh, uh, I, ROTC. Well, I think the discussions we have, everybody's committed to doing everything that we talked about. I can't imagine we'd say we're going to do one project for $30 million. Yeah. I understand. You know, I, mean, I, I wouldn't say that much good. flexibility that you I, I think I don't think anybody would have that kind of intent to do anything like that. I can't imagine. But, uh, I don't think we will either. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you know how to get rid of the temptation uh, doing your budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I was, we we certainly had. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think we're going to be kind of surprised at what security and cameras yeah, and things kind of like that. <laughs> if, we, if we start outfitting every school and, and doing what we talked about and want to do about well, entryways. Well, that's the same thing. Well, so we were so aggressive in the last one where we named all these projects that had to get done in this class, but we left ourselves very little room for everyday stuff like buses and technology and things like that. And, you know, some of that stuff maybe could have been pushed back a little bit, but we didn't have that option. Whereas if we leave it open like this, we get things done, they get done, but we still have some flexibility to handle things that come up in, over the period of five years. This is five years ago. That we've yeah. got to spin out this way. And we've got a five year facility plan that we, we're going to need to upgrade HVACs. We've got a lot of schools that are 20, 20, 22, 23 years old. We might have to replace HVACs, we might have to replace flooring, lighting. Uh, we got a lot of work that we might have to do with this. And uh, I, I think it's going to be real positive for making sure our schools are taken care of. And buses, we need to buy uh, buses for the bus fleet. So, computers. Will we at some point find a developer budget? Yes, yes sir. But the first step is to make sure we're going to have the funds to be able yeah. to, to you raise plans. Yeah, you got to get, you know. So. All right, there any more questions about the resolution? Broad resolution. <laughs> what you say, it could be pretty broad. And that's pretty wrong. <laughs> well, you know, the previous, basically the same wording as the previous one, except the previous one we had Nichols School and the Home Art Center and the Ag Barn. And other than that, we've got the, the ROTC and we've got the Acquired Installed System Wide Security. So, uh, very similar. I don't know many school systems that have been real specific that 
didn't regret it. Five board members think that things come up and buses might double, might go half price, and they even more money for security or something. I think when we whiteboarded that thing, it was, what did Jimmy come back with? I think we get done for half a million dollars. <laughs> oh, they were trying to build one too small to that land. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, what? Like 200 for the world. I'm going to get it. I haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah. You know that <laughs> All right. Um, Y'all, um, Good with resolution. We'll place on the consent agenda. All right. If there's no objection, we'll put it on there. Policies. We've got a policy IDE grades nine through twelve interscholastic activities. If you'll look towards the bottom of the policy, you'll see. We have a statement there that says to be eligible for participation, the student must be enrolled in grades six through eight in the Coffee County School District. We've added for the board's approval and discussion, however, any fifth grade student who cannot be served by the city of Douglas Parks Recreation Department because of age restrictions will be allowed to participate at the middle school level, grades six through eight. What we've had happen is that the Recreation Department, Georgia Parks and Recs has changed their age, their cutoff date for young people to be eligible to participate. And so it's going to cause more of our fifth grade students to be ineligible for Parks and Rec. Uh, the, the way they change their, their age requirements, we could have uh, quite a few fifth graders who can't participate in cheerleading or football or baseball or any of their activities and we felt like uh, we would want to open those activities up for those students to be able to participate in middle school if it's the age restriction that affects them. Uh, I've got coach Steve White here. He has been corresponding with Willis Crockett at the recreation department. And coach is that pretty much the We're looking at probably somewhere between 15 and 20 kids for football not sure about cheerleading. I know uh, the age control date in the rec department was August 1st. School control date is May 1st. They've rolled theirs back, which is, uh, there's always been some fifth graders that have been left out, but that number's gonna grow now. And uh, like I said, Landy told me a week or so ago that for right now there's 15 to 20 kids somewhere in that range in the fall. I know the way we're doing uh, our baseball in the spring, there's going to be a number of fifth graders that are going to not have a place to play baseball unless they can come up and play in our middle school rec league for 13 and 14 year olds. And it's not a situation where a coach is going to go into the elementary level and cherry pick based on ability. It's strictly to serve fifth graders. Our fifth graders that are being left out because they're too old. It's simply just a, and that's all. That's all. That's it. It's only for fifth graders, and it's only those that cannot participate because they are too old, too old to play at the, in the league. And we're not talking about a whole lot, but we hate for those kids not have anywhere to play for a full calendar year, which is who will be in charge of checking that. Well, the reg what happens? It's going. To, Landy and Willis are waiting to hear from me if this resolution, if you, if you pass this resolution or this amendment tonight. I will let them know and then they'll correspond with those fifth graders that they've had to turn down and let them know that the avenue's open to to uh, participate in the middle school level and then of course coach shook and i'll handle the paperwork as far as getting them involved over there but it's going to spur this this was started this came from them to us that could we help them on this because they, they were finding because of the age change there were more kids they were having to turn away and that's just not a good thing, and we need to try to help them if we can. I don't, I don't mind trying to help them, but I don't mm -hmm. really, you know, just placing kids that are already in the sixth grade and seventh and eighth. You know, I, I, I don't certainly see that happen very much. The main, the when you get into sports that have tryouts, it's going to be kind of difficult for those kids to participate. First of all, they're going to, have to they would have to compete against folks older and I don't even know if time frame wise is going to work 
the big ones are cheerleading and football in the fall and baseball in the spring where there's no cut it's unlimited everybody's going to get the opportunity to participate nobody's going to get turned away at the middle school level and that's that's where the, the most of the kids we're talking about will be affected in those areas but i understand your concern and because we had some concerns about that a couple of years ago but this is to me this is totally different we're trying to take care of some kids they're getting caught in a loophole age restriction wise and we need to give those kids something to do after school in the in the fall and spring if we can and not displace other kids which i don't think we're going to do in this case all right is there any more conversation don't put it on the facility again so these are, these are fifth graders that you're talking about going to play with the sixth grade? Yeah, you would have the opportunity to play with the sixth grade. Because they're too old. Too old to play with the rich. Yeah, they got a late birthday. We've had some of these every year, but we just had a few. But what he's saying is now they've rolled their age they back. Instead of having two or three, now we've got 15 and 20. We got a lot more. How is that going to be said by our sixth and eighth? Our sixth graders. Well, I mean, they're going to have to compete, right? Trials. Well, if we not much in middle school, no, you know, sixth right. grade, you don't have a whole lot. I mean, football, if you go after your own team, you know, it's not the way they got the baseball right now. So, I mean, I don't, there's not really any competition as far as that. To, you know, that and we actually school. don't have sixth grade in basket in the, some of the winter sports. They would have sixth graders are already having to try out against seventh graders. So it's not a it's a, it's a situation we're mainly talking about cheerleading in football and baseball, which is going to be nobody turned away. Everybody's going to have a place to be, to, to participate. All the cheerleaders. Same, so yes, so same thing. The fifth, if the, cheer, the fifth grade cheerleader is, cannot cheer right, then they'll be able to um, at least try. try out for the sixth grade, which I haven't, you know, that, that, that hadn't even been put together. And I'm not totally sure we, we will even do sixth grade cheer. We haven't, you know, that's not, something that we do every year. But mainly we're talking about foot, football, there'll be a place for them and not displacing anybody. Baseball, there'll be a place for them. Nobody will be displaced. Everybody's gonna get the opportunity to participate. These kids are just gonna get an opportunity that they won't have unless we can revisit this policy. And you are comfortable with this. I am very much so. you're comfortable so. with the process yeah. that it won't be mismanaged or absolutely because there, there's there, there's no gray area it's going to be these kids this group of kids the direct department sends to us because they can't serve them and this that's it all right and again this was initiated really by them not not by us coach they come you, to us. you ensure that you charge those sixth grade coaches to to he the, the idea that we wouldn't want a sixth grader sitting on the bench with a fifth grader playing ahead of they need to use some some good judgments on how they administrate that you know i would i would hope it i know it's not a perfect world but i would hope we encourage our coaches at the middle school level to ensure maximum participation of everybody some do a better job than others but we, we strongly feel that our middle school at the middle school level we need to develop a love for the game and, and kind of hook the kids at that level and make them enjoy what they're doing and to do that you got to let them all participate and give them all a chance to you know to, to play and that's that's, that's not going to change with if this group of kids is added with them we're always going to encourage that with our middle school coaches you may just have to encourage it a little bit more strongly now i could do that that's great sure mm -hmm. but you you can make that argument the way it is right now it has nothing to do with this policy you know, I mean, I think they all at that age need to all be getting a certain amount of reps and stuff, but it has nothing to do with this. Uh, but I agree with you, that needs to be emphasized. Uh, I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm glad we got the capacity to be able to serve. I mean, if, if the city can, just simply because of the birthday. And we did. And so, yes. Not in every sport, but in, right. in some, and we, could, we would like to serve them where we can. You want us to put that, break that down? Yeah, I'm not putting him in the position now to do that. All right, we'll move that to the regular agenda. School security. I wanted to to present some concepts that we've been working on. School security. Uh, let's figure this thing out. 
Board members, we have uh, been working on a plan to uh, enhance school security for some time. I kind of wanted to review first off though our mission of destination graduation for college career and life and our vision of creating a stronger community through an equitable and excellent education for every student. I included the map of, of Coffee County over there and you see the, the county right there and you see the surrounding counties and you know we've been talking about uh, how we're a regional system and that we uh, have really been uh, doing some things that, that have our people excited and wanted to share some of those accomplishments with you tonight. Um, we had a leadership retreat in May with 45 of our staff members from across the district and we analyzed achievement data and we planned for the 18-19 school year and a part of that was safety and we're going to get to that in a minute but before we do we wanted to celebrate some of our, our uh, positive things that happened in 17-18. Reward schools, we had Westside, Ambrose, Broxton, and Nichols were named reward schools by the State Department. Coffee High School was recognized for excellence in AP honors. So Coffee High School is recognized by the Georgia State Department of Education for excellence. Uh, middle school principal, Ms. Sherry Berry, was named principal of the year. We had the largest graduating class ever in the history of Coffee High School. We had the highest number of honor graduates and Zell Miller graduates. Coffee County School System beat the odds five years in a row. And that's against other systems like us in the state of Georgia. Successful charter renewal. We had the team that went to Atlanta and we got the seal of approval from the State Department of Education for renewing our charter. The Trojan football team made their first ever state appearance in the state championship game. Trojan boys basketball. Uh, the boys won the region straight out. The girls won the regular season region and uh, made it to the third round of the playoffs. And we're pretty sure that's the first time in the history of the school that the boys and the girls have made it to the third round and made it that deep in basketball. Uh, wrestling, we had two state champions. It's the first time we've ever had two state champions in Coffee County in wrestling. We had, and they finished sixth in the state. Boys and girls swimming, both were region champions. Boys and girls tennis, both were region champions. At one point in the year, we were ranked number one in boys athletics in the state of Georgia in 6A. We had 12 Coffee High School seniors who were early admitted to the University of Georgia. We, this fall, we're gonna start on the Georgia Tech campus with 14 Coffee High School graduates, which is amazing. And not all those are freshmen, but we'll have 14 students there from Coffee High. We opened the new Nichols Elementary School this year. We opened the Billy Walker Agriculture Center. We've got one of the finest ag centers in this part of the state, maybe the state. Um, South Region Vice President in FFA resides here in Coffee County. We had the winner of the state floral design. So not only did we have state champion wrestlers, we had the state champion in floral design. Construction of fine arts. We, we are underway with the construction of the Fine Arts Center. We balanced the budget this year, which is tremendous and says a lot about the work of the board and our teachers and staff and administration. We uh, unfroze the classified salaries back in January, their salary steps, and we'll continue that this July. So as we move into the new year, they'll receive additional salary steps. Five Risa Riding Fair winners. Coffee High School added the arts to the STEM program, so now we have a STEAM summer internship. The Georgia High School Migrant Student of the Year, we had the Migrant Student of the Year for the entire state of Georgia. And then Coffee Middle School was recognized nationally at a, at a national conference for Math 180. So a lot of good things happened this year. There's other things I'm sure we could cite, but just wanted to celebrate a little bit. We, we celebrated this earlier this week when we had all of our administrative staff come back and we reviewed some of these concepts. So I thought we'd share that with the board and with the public. Now, strategic planning. You have at your, your site, you have a copy of our new strategic plan. So this is officially the strategic plan that we will be using for the next five years to guide the work of the district. There's some exciting pieces in there. Uh, as you take here and leave tonight you can take your copy of the plan with you and peruse that uh, we tried to include a lot of graphics to uh, update the community on where we're at as a school system and a county 
and let every one of our stakeholders in the county know what we're doing as a school system. And so a lot of useful information in there. If you turn to the page that has the four pillars, you'll see the focus areas of our strategic plan. proud of the work that our staff did in preparing this and, and uh, the folks at Ford ne Next Generation were very pleased and, and what they told us is we're going to have people coming to look at what Coffee County's doing in the future. So I'm excited about that. Now, if you will, uh, we will come back to the strategic plan, but I wanted to review for the board and for the public some of the things we've been doing for school safety over the last six months to improve school safety. House Bill 763 deals with school safety planning, and we've been focusing on prevention, communication, and response over the last few months, especially the last three months of the school year. Prevention. We want to prevent things from happening. One of the tools that we're using is a system called Gaggle. And this is a web filtering system that runs behind the scenes on our network. And pretty much anything that goes on that involves our email, our Google system, the Google Docs, the Google uh, spreadsheets, anything that's involved on our internet system or linked to our internet system through an email address will run through this filter. So it gives us the ability to know uh, what our young people are doing out there and to help us kind of keep tabs on what's going on when they're online and they link their system to our system. I've got a short video that, that explains it. I will share this video with you board members just so you have an idea of what this system does. G Suite for Education and Office 365 are powerful learning tools but they also can be dangerous, like digital playgrounds without fences or recess monitors. Gaggle Safety Management protects your students and helps them become responsible digital citizens. By combining machine learning technology with trained safety experts, Gaggle analyzes and reviews content found in online file storage, inbound and outbound email, attachments, and links to websites. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Gaggle is on the lookout for references to drug and alcohol use, intentions of violence, sexual content, self-harm, hate speech, pornography, and more. To comply with CIPA, the Children's Internet Protection Act, schools must have an internet safety policy that ensures the safety of minors using email, chat rooms, and other forms of electronic communication. In addition, schools must provide security measures to protect students against content that is obscene or pornographic. Gaggle Safety Management provides real-time image analysis that detects pornography and obscene images before they reach students. If pornography appears to depict an underage student, Gaggle notifies a school or district emergency contact. And to protect you from the risks involved in handling child pornography, Gaggle files a report with NCMEC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Gaggle Safety Management has your back. Here's how. If a student violates your internet safety policy, they receive warnings for infractions, such as minor profanity, insulting language, or provocative images. For more serious situations, such as incidents of bullying and mentions of drugs or alcohol, Gaggle safety representatives forward the content to school or district contacts for further review. When there's an imminent threat to a student's safety, which can involve self-harm or harm to others, Gaggle notifies a school emergency contact and, when time is of the essence, can even reach out to law enforcement. School and district leaders have access to the Gaggle Safety Management Dashboard for insight into student behavior. Discover which schools and students have the highest number of incidents, the communication tools being used, and how you compare to other schools and districts across the country. The dashboard also helps you decide where to direct digital citizenship resources. With Gaggle Safety Management, you can create a positive school climate and increase student achievement. It's easy to create a safe digital learning environment in only a few minutes. Implementation requires little to no school or district IT resources. 
Gaggle Safety Management works behind the scenes and can be set up on a short phone call. Make G Suite for Education or Office 365 safe for your students. I wanted to share that with board members just as an idea of how we are trying to prevent any incidents of students uh, harming themselves. And that was one of the, the biggest pieces of that was for us to be able to intervene before something bad might happen involving a student uh, in school or outside of school. So this, this tool has been very useful over the last few months. We've, we've intervened in some different cases and I won't get into all those details, but I can tell you it's, it's really changed the work that Dr. Newell and, and his, his team does and Dr. Banks and myself and, and our entire administration. And so we feel like it's been good to help us stay ahead of some things that have been going on. And uh, it is 24-7, involves a lot of time, but I think it's, it's well worth it. So as far as communication, what are we doing with communication? We've got an online anonymous reporting system on our website, so parents, uh, community members, if they know of something that's going on that we need to know about, then they can report online anonymously and let us know. And once again, those those uh, notices would come in to uh, Dr. Newell, myself, uh, Dr. Banks, and then we would disperse the notices to the administration at the schools. And uh, it, that's been very helpful also over the last few months and the end of the school year, we used that to uh, get in front of some things that were going on. And, and once again, that's a, it's, it's kind of changed the work that we're doing and uh, it's been very helpful. But that's the form there that somebody would fill out and uh, report to us something they feel like we need to know about. Response, if there were an incident that uh, needed to uh, immediately uh, notify law enforcement of. Uh, we have all of our staff have the School Guard app that is included uh, for all of our staff. We've purchased this and they can download it on their smartphone and have access to that in all of our school buildings and at the central office. This app would allow uh, a staff member, if, if need be, to uh, mash one button on their phone and call 911 and immediately every law enforcement member in the county including state patrol, GBI, uh, sheriff's department, police departments, any off-duty uh, or active duty law enforcement would know uh, to go to that school site. So this really gives us immediate response to a situation in a school. Other activities that we've been carrying out with our, our students and our staff, active shooter drills involving students. We drilled active shooter in all of our all of our schools this past spring and our law enforcement did a fantastic job coming in and helping us with that. The Sheriff's Department provided tremendous support. Uh, Chris Elrod with the Sheriff's Department has been uh, invaluable in moving forward with that training. They've actually been training this week at the middle school, all of our law enforcement. They had about 50 law enforcement officers, Sheriff's Department, other agencies were at our middle school training all week long. And I went out there and met with them and they had all of them in the media center and we're debriefing and going over different tactics and such and then they exercise out of the building all week so great great support from our law enforcement community increasing awareness with faculty and staff communicating with sheriff's department communicating and training with gema i talked with our gema representative this morning uh, he's with the department of homeland security and he's aware of everything that we're working on we'll talk about more of that in a few minutes but uh, received recommendation for security measures from principals. We studied options for additional armed security, and we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. And a retreat with board members. We met with you back in uh, February, then we, we had other meetings where we talked about school security and gotten your input. And one of the big things was counseling social workers that you talked about the heading off before we have an incident. And so we've hired three student support case managers or social workers. Uh, we, we, we're in the process of hiring those positions, but we did fund those positions using some federal funds and we're in the process of trying to fill them now. So we are going to get more uh, social work type case managers, student support managers uh, out in the, in the schools. Law enforcement walked through the campuses and made suggestions. Once again, the Sheriff's Department sent 
Chris Elrod in and he surveyed all of our schools and made suggestions on things we need to change and we are actively changing it. At Coffee High School we're doing some work this summer. We did work on many of our elementary campuses in the spring to, and to uh, update entryways and we put buzzers and locks on doors and, and secured uh, entryways into our schools and we're currently working on that even, even as we speak uh, out at high school. Applying for COP school safety grant over the past two weeks. We have applied for a school safety grant uh, in conjunction with Wiregrass Technical College and our law enforcement partners here in town. We have placed in that grant application a state-of-the-art communication system including digital radios and cell phone upgrades in all of our buildings and, and other communication type devices, panic buttons and stuff and, and such as that in buildings. So we're currently applying for the COP school safety grant. Keep your, keep your fingers crossed, hopefully we get that. And then uh, we place GPS monitors on every system on vehicles. So uh, Buddy in transportation will be able to put the map up on the screen and he'll be able to see where every bus in the district is at at any given time in Coffee County. He'll be able to see where any system vehicle is at at any given time. And the idea with that, we need to know where our kids are at even when they're on the bus where they're at in Coffee County. So we'll be able to, to identify every vehicle that we own when it's uh, out on the road on the map. So, Does that include pickups and all? Yes, sir. All system owned vehicles will have a GPS installed for safety. We need to know where everybody's at. So uh, upgrade the security measures system wide and uh, we'll talk more about that moving forward. We're going in, and we put that on the East Plus and that's the next one on the East Plus 5. We're going to continue to upgrade our facilities, upgrade our systems, our camera systems, all of that will be part of East Plus 5. And we, we, we really need that funding to be able to continue to do that work. Uh, we're, we're doing all we can now, but you all know that's a constant um, improvement that you have to make to, to become as secure as you possibly can. Uh, implementing House Bill 763, that's a new law that we're having to work on and having to work with interagency uh, groups here in the community, all of our law enforcement partners, our judges, uh, there'll be different groups, social worker groups will be involved. So uh, the House Bill 763 is going to be a big project for us to make sure we're, we're doing the things we're supposed to do, but we're going to carry it out and, uh, and create those networks that we need to have. Now, if you'll turn in your, in your strategic plan to page 12, in your strategic plan, you'll see on page 12 under focus area three people and culture our focus area there is that we will provide a welcoming environment and positive culture for students and employees under strategy three you'll see design and implement consistent updated safety plans and secure environments for all locations which include local partnerships enhanced Communication, active shooter, and safety training is an implementation of Gaggle online anonymous reporting system and school guard. So that is a strategy that is in our plan that we are working on now. I've been in talks with the sheriff department, the Coffee County uh, government, our, our county administration. Uh, we've been in talks with GEMA and the Department of Homeland Security, as well as the city of Douglas Police Department. And a recommendation that I bring to the board tonight is that we are committed to support and continue our SRO program at Coffee Middle School, George Washington Carver Freshman Campus, Alternative School and Coffee High School. We want to support and continue our current SRO program. We want to provide armed law enforcement that are post-certified at each one of our elementary schools. So that's that's important. Board members, you told us that's important that we want to have officers in all of our schools. Support and partner with campus police at Wiregrass Technical College and South Georgia State College. Manage scheduling, staffing, and require training for all officers employed by the school system. Achieve desired outcomes by implementing an efficient, and I should underline sustainable model for the Coffee County Schools. We want to put together a plan that's sustainable, all right, and efficient and then ultimately provide safe schools for all of our students and staff. What I'm asking the board tonight to approve is 
a resolution to create a Coffee County School System Safety Department. With board consensus, the resolution will be included in the consent agenda for vote at the regular monthly meeting immediately following this meeting. Board approval of the resolution will launch the Coffee County School System Safety Department. You'll find on your board agenda the resolution itself. The resolution reads, whereas the Coffee County School District presently has an arrangement with the Coffee County the Coffee County pursuant to which the Coffee County and Coffee County Sheriff's Office furnishes school resource officers, SROs, who are deputy sheriffs with the Sheriff's Office to serve as school security personnel at various schools and facilities of the district. And whereas for the past several months, the district has, has had additional security on all of its campuses through separate arrangements with the Sheriff's Office and certain county municipalities and the board has determined that safety and security of the district student staff and schools in general will be furthered by the district securing additional school security personnel in addition to the SROs furnished by the county. And whereas the board desires that such school security personnel have the same law enforcement powers on school property, including the power to arrest as county and municipal law enforcement officers, be certified by the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council and be authorized to carry a standard issue firearm or weapon generally used for law enforcement purposes for the purpose of carrying out law enforcement duties and whereas the board desires to authorize and direct the superintendent to move forward in developing a plan for securing such additional school security personnel and implementing the same as soon as practical. Now therefore, be it hereby resolved that the superintendent of the Coffee County School District be and he hereby is authorized and directed to develop a plan for and move forward in having the school system secure additional school security personnel who will have the same law enforcement powers on school property, including the power to arrest as Coffee County and municipal law enforcement officers, be certified by the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council, and be authorized to carry a standard issue firearm or weapon generally used for law enforcement purposes for the purpose of carrying out law enforcement duties. Resolve further that such plan for additional school security personnel may include directly employing persons to provide the same as well as contracting with Coffee County and local municipalities, law enforcement agencies, private firms, and individuals who provide contract labor. Resolve further that the superintendent is further authorized and directed to implement such plans as soon as practical, including the expenditure of district funds as may be reasonably required to do the same adopted this day in July 2018. So what I'm asking the board to do is approve this resolution. This will give us the authority to go ahead and form our Coffee County School System Safety Department. And the Safety Department would be in charge of uh, our officers within the district, whether they be employed uh, with one of the local law enforcement agencies or whether we employ them directly or whether we contract with them as individuals, if they're post-certified with one of the local agencies, then we could employ them at a daily rate or an hourly rate and uh, use them in a contract capacity. So this would allow us essentially to create our own uh, police department within the school system. Okay. Questions? Uh, I appreciate you. I know, I know we've asked you to come tonight with at least a recommendation to yes, sir. the school system. To get to get to a point that we can do something sustainable, what what's the plan for August tenth? August tenth, I've talked with the sheriff and with the chief of police. I've talked with the Nichols uh, chief of police, and and we will continue to have uh, officers in our schools as we did at the close of the year, and we will we will uh, pay those agencies individuals as we were paying them at the close of the school year. So that's the most important piece. We will have officers in the schools. At the beginning of the school year what we're looking for here is a sustainable plan in which we can be efficient and we can best use taxpayer dollars and we feel like this plan is the best way to use taxpayer dollars uh, which is uh, which is to be uh, in control of the program ourselves i talked to the sheriff this morning he was very comfortable with this idea i talked with the chief of police from the city of douglas he was very comfortable with this idea i talked with the gema homeland security representative uh, and he was he was very comfortable with this concept. He said a lot of school districts are doing this exact same thing. 
across our state and this is nothing for the school district right now what we would do is employ a school safety director and that would be our only full-time employee starting out this would essentially be somebody with the qualifications of a chief of police uh, we would go out and advertise and, and try to find the most qualified law enforcement person we could bring in to our school system as a full-time employee to manage these operations. I, I know one of the things you shared with me this week, I don't know if you spoke to the other board members, part of this was contingent on discussions with insurance uh, yes, uh, underwriters, things like that, as to what other school systems were. I know we had talked about doing some different things early on, but we, we had a conference call with Mr. Mr. Cottingham, our, our GSBA insurance carrier. Some of their underwriters were on the conference call. Ms. Young was on the conference call. Uh, Dr. Banks was on the conference call. And we discussed the, uh, this exact same plan. And our insurance carrier said they would support us with these individuals that we would contract with or individuals that we would employ would be covered under our liability coverage as a school system. So they, they are going to cover us moving forward with this resolution. We have, uh, I mean, you use CSOs like we have now, or SROs. You know, the Sheriff's Department employs them, and they pretty much give them directives of what they're supposed to be accomplished. And we have input in that. But I mean, yes, sir. You know, if we went with uh, any kind of private stuff, there's somebody in charge of, you know, training these people, doing all that kind of stuff. Where, where does the this committee and the this other position come in. If if all these schools have somebody and they're told what they need to be doing and what they're you know what what is this position? The what, chief or the, the the security director, uh, the system safety director, will be responsible for making sure each individual that's in our school has their post certification, making sure they have their annual training, making sure the schools are scheduled to make sure we have coverage in each school. They will be the authority over those eight individuals that we employ for the elementary schools we need somebody to bring that together and to be responsible for that and, and the, the insurance uh, uh, individuals that we spoke with yesterday that was one of their questions how are you going to ensure that they are post certified how are you going to ensure that they're they're scheduled correctly how are you going to ensure that they have the training they need to get and that that yeah, would be the job yeah, of we all. don't go through the sheriff's department or a private firm and we just employ them we need this this deal is yeah. that what we're saying? No, we can use officers from the sheriff's department. We can use officers from the police department. We can use officers that we employ full time. They'll have to have their post certification. We will operate as a police department. Essentially, the law allows us to form our own police department, just as you have the Coffee County or the city of police of Douglas, the city of Nich Nichols. The law allows us to form our own agency, and that's essentially what we will be doing. But, and, I, and that's my question, but, uh, but why? would we form our own police agency if we don't need to? Well, we need if, to. That, that's what I'm asking. Why do we need if, if the, Right now, if the SROs, the Sheriff's Department, make sure they're trained and they're whatever, whatever, if we went out and got our elementary schools and we either used that, that or a private deal, they should be making sure that's... Well, here, here's the rub is Fair Labor Standards Act. The Sheriff's Department, they can work 48 hours a week, and if they go beyond that, then we have to pay them overtime. And that's what we're running into now with the sheriff's department, we're running into it with the police department, we're running into it with, with all of our local agencies, we're having to pay overtime pay. So that that's a big problem with it. If we employ them ourselves, we don't have to worry about overtime pay. We can do a 1099 and pay them a, a flat rate of, let's say 15 or $16 an hour and employ them in that capacity and then we don't have to worry about overtime. And we can use guys from the sheriff's department, we can use guys from the police department, we can use guys from a private firm. But then we don't you have to worry about it. That's right. We have control of it. But the, this director would manage that program. They yes, would be sir. the ones, they would interview the potential. They would be a law enforcement the person. They would, like I said, we would be looking for the quality of person who could operate a, a local uh, municipality's uh, police department. That would be nice increase our liability, though, for yeah. any of that. that from my, my understanding, yeah. it's actually going to, I don't say decrease it, but there were a lot of questions about the things that we had been talking about, either doing a, a, a private, fully private, or this mixed bag like we've been doing. And I'm, 
I was just concerned. I'm concerned. I'm much, about I'm much more comfortable having somebody that we employ full time over over the operations than relying on other agencies that, that uh, aren't accountable like we are to y'all. <laughs> we're accountable to y'all. So well, I'm just. I mean, that's not typically the business we're in, and that's what I'm saying. So that's 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 why we'll hire uh, a law enforcement uh, veteran, somebody who's been in and, and understands. So our public, this is a brand new concept. This is not something that we've talked about a lot at all. So that, you know, it is, all these questions are important because we want our parents and students to understand why this is even a discussion that we're having. So you're saying we would save some hourly because of the fair yes, labor. Yes, you're going to have to employ your director. Yes, we will. We will expend a salary. We budgeted $250,000 in the budget for safety. So we have the money budgeted to do it. And I just want to go back to the liability. This is not increasing our liability by having this on our campus now. This is our no, complete ma'am. responsibility. I think this decreases our liability. I think in, in today's world, if we don't have law enforcement on campuses, I think we're being... No, I'm not no, saying we would have the law. I'm saying if we have law enforcement and something happens, and they come back and say, well, law enforcement, you know, you were in charge of it, you didn't do a good enough job, as opposed to we had hired somebody or yes. using the SRO officers, you know, that's the lie bit. I'm not talking about not having yeah. versus half. I'm talking about that's us being in charge well, of them doing their we job. We will have coverage under our current uh, insurer. So, uh, we're, I mean, you expressed to me there were concerns expressed from the underwriters and and and, and in the new this house build that if we continue to operate like we're operating, it's really not what we want to do. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's just a piece yeah, well, We're just kind of doing it piecemeal. Yeah, we're just there. relying on the other agencies to try to piece it together. And I'm not a law enforcement uh, person. I, I, I came up in education and I'm an educator. Dr. Banks does a great job, but he's an educator. Uh, we need somebody on staff who's post certified, who is a law enforcement expert, and that we can have in our cabinet level meetings in here when we talk about something going on out there that we've got law enforcement at the table with us all the time. I think it'll be a real advantage for our school district and our community. Well, since we don't have law enforcement in us, who's going to be responsible for hiring the director of safety? Myself and Dr. Banks. Well, you don't know nothing about law enforcement. You well, we'll, we'll work with law enforcement. We'll, okay. we'll work with law enforcement okay. to better. But I, it's, okay. I've hired That's a lot of I'm, people. I'm yeah, gonna, I know. I think we yeah, hire. He interrested me. Yeah. Of course, y'all. That's right. Right. You get yeah. somebody to work along with you in law enforcement. That's right. I'm confident okay, we can get somebody strong. I talked with another superintendent who did this, mm -hmm. and she said you will get the best law enforcement people in the area who will want to pursue this position. All right. So, so expand on that. How many other counties, how many other school systems are currently under this model and are being? Atkinson County. Okay. That's it. Dory's got them. And you've spoken with several other superintendents yes, about their experiences, and they're all positive. favorable and Very positive. Very positive. Yes, I, mean, I know the I know the metro schools have their Brantley own. County, Axon County, uh, Daugherty County, uh, uh, Polk County, County, Gwinnett yeah. County, Cobb yeah. County, Cherokee County, uh, Rockdale County. Do this. They did it about three years ago. Mr. Yes. It's then um, and Reagan the uh, and Reagan. Uh, They've either had SROs that were furnished through the sheriff or the police department, you know, used the county to print, or they've had in the past uh, directly had their own police department, like they call it Glen County. Glen County said when they're kind of one of the early one of the early ones that had the police department. What Brian said, uh, this what y'all did after the Parkland, Florida thing, it's kind of it's been stopped stop yet. Everybody went and said, hey, we got SROs and we don't have them at all the schools. Let's do something. So Dr. Lease has gone to the sheriff and he's gone to the uh, chief of police up here and in Nichols. And they're the ones having to furnish. So where their problem has gotten to be, it's kind of gotten to be a cost problem. And that most law enforcement, just kind of part of the trade, work two jobs or many jobs, a couple of jobs. And so when they've gone and put in 48 hours, words like the mile, this is your office, 
is uh, 40 hours, but law enforcement do 48. When they go over that, they've got to pass that cost to a lot of y'all. And from what Dr. Leeds has said, not being in law enforcement, it's a management thing. Uh, their main concern, we were talking to GSBA, if we didn't kind of have somebody, they weren't insisting on it, we've got our coverage, it's not going to cost us anymore, is uh, they say they're post uh, certified and they work for 2018, but who's watching to make sure they get the annual uh, training to, to retain your post uh, certification for next year? So it's really kind of a management thing. And then Dr. Leeson talking about it and other school systems said, listen, besides just getting employing them, what if on some of them we just went to, you know, the, the firms that have been uh, the makeup of the RFPs to y'all? or go to individuals. You've got a lot of uh, retired police officers who really don't need any benefits. So uh, anybody that was actually employed with the school system will obviously get a W-2. But the others would just get a 1099, but it would all be managed by this police officer rather than Dr. Lee's manager or Dr. Bikes manager. I assume it's going to be under Dr. Bikes? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. It's, it's really a supervision. So I think it'll be, it's kind of unknown now in talking about it this last week whether it will be one person and then we end up, y'all end up, because really there's, you're telling me there's seven hours at all the elementary schools? Yes, sir. And so they put in a full work, a week of work on their job, and then somebody's got to see, oh, I can't come tomorrow. So I'm gonna get somebody, y'all principal, did y'all know why? Like <laughs> and we, we talked with the Pope, you bring up a good point, we talked with the Pope superintendent, and she, she cited the fact that they're doing $15 an hour, and she said that they were able to fill all six of their elementary schools with retired post-certified law enforcement officers. She said they had many high-quality retirees who were in law enforcement that wanted to do that work, and she said they had no problem filling it with really quality individuals to serve in all those campuses. And then she also cited the benefit of having the, the and they're not, they're no bigger than us, but they actually have a chief and then they also have two lieutenants that are full-time employees we're not we're not advocating for any more than than the one school safety director school safety director but the benefit of having a full-time school safety director is if one of those individuals gets sick at one of the elementary schools you've got the school safety director that can go over there and fill in for that day while there so you always have somebody who can and she said they use their full-time officers to go ride around and check the schools, check the gates, make sure things are secure. Uh, she really cited some benefits to having the full-time employee, but I'm only advocating the one school safety director that would be the full-time employee. Well, if one of our SRO officers now gets sick, who's responsible for making well, the sure sheriff, we have, the sheriff so department. there's still a level of satisfaction that that position is going to be taken care of. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we're not we're not going to do away with the SRO. No, I know. I was going yeah. back to you know. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm just saying we still are confident that the sheriff is going to take care of making sure that sick SRO somebody is in his place. At, we haven't been running at the middle school and high school yes. level. Yes, at the middle school and high school level. Possible. But in, in the elementary grades right now, we're just kind of relying on this patchwork right. system the best that they can, and they don't necessarily have the manpower and the people power. Uh, to, to continue doing what we're currently doing for too long. They so, we can do it when we start up, but. So this safety director is only doing the middle school? No, the elementary school. I mean, elementary school. But he will be working or she will be working closely with law enforcement. Our idea is that they, they work together like a glove, that they all work closely together, one team, one coffee, and that we all work together to make sure our kids are safe. Reagan so just, uh, I was just going to say, Jason was talking about a resolution that was kind of being brought a while ago. All he's really saying at this point, Dr. Lee really wants to kind of take what he's got on mind as safety director, and anybody that's actually employed will have to have your approval. But this is real broad, but the plan that for getting additional school security personnel may include directly employing them or contracting. So uh, 
he just kind of tell you he's going to need to move forward for getting as soon as possible after school starts somebody to be able to implement this plan. Well, and, and this resolution does not include that position. So if the board directed us not right. to hire the school safety director, I guess we wouldn't if that was the favor of the board. But if you know, if you so choose, we could certainly. This would allow us to do that. It would allow us to do pretty much anything that we need to do to make sure we have officers in our elementary schools. And, and, I, and like I say, I think we, we need to have officers in our elementary school. I think we're committed to doing that. But my next question is then, if we've got a school safety director who's doing elementary school, why would we not do the middle and high school with that too? Well, our, our plan that we currently have at Millen High Schools is working. We've got a great partnership with the Sheriff. Well, so that, that, to me, that's your biggest well, thing you've seen. That that's your biggest threat. That's where you're, you know. I think we take one step at a time, and I think we, we stick with what we have working right now. And, you know, down the road, you bring up a good point. It may be something we look at down the road. There could be some efficiencies one day to look at in that regard and some improvements. But for now, my recommendation is we stick with our current middle school and high school SRO program. And, and build towards our elementary schools. And once we have, if the board so chooses to allow us to hire a school safety director, then we would we would probably look at the whole picture and this school safety director ultimately would be the person we would look to for guidance in dealing with all of those law enforcement officers within well, our I think if you're gonna schools. go to that trouble, if you're gonna start a quote, you know, police force, I mean, I think you do look at all of your Oh, we certainly would, that. yes, sir. That would all be under yes, review. You just time. described the efficiency. So why would well, you want to take those efficiencies to all campuses well, versus just, just, I'm just not And I understand baby steps, right. but I, mean, I do yeah, think that needs to be considered. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and, and quite honestly, I don't know that, that, that you wouldn't get cooperation from all sides on that because it would create efficiencies for other groups too. But I think we need to need to don't get too big a hurry. Well, well, I'm just asking thing. why we're why we're having certain areas. Right. So first step is to for the resolution yeah. yes. and that allows you to continue to formulate the plan a little bit more that's detail right. that's right okay. and have people and in have elementary schools always it authorizes us to be an agency that can employ post-certified law enforcement officers in any capacity whether we contract with them with the 1099 or whether we employ them full-time it gives it fully authorizes the board of education to hire post-certified law enforcement officers just to give and you the ability to power and, and have, and have weapons, which y'all got to say. Right. But this will give you the ability to have people in the school with office of tenth, and then we can work out the rest of them as we get it. That's right. And and your SRO agreement uh, has 90 days to tell Jeff we're going to you know, kind of take this in house, but he said that's down the road. Eh? No, that's fine. I'm just asking what our game plan is. But at this point, I, I would not advise that that step. I think we, we are working great. In our well, I mean, our focus agencies. on this whole thing was to get the elementary it's schools. Yeah. So we weren't yeah. even discussing that sort of thing. I mean, this I is all. This is. This, I think this is the culmination of a lot of discussion and a lot of work on your part, your staff's part, everyone involved on something that we can. That, that's going to be managed here. You know, that, that we're going to be responsible for because we're ultimately going to be responsible for the budget piece and how, how we're going to pay for it. And I, don't, I just, I don't believe we can sustain, I don't, I don't think the departments can, physic, can physically sustain working overtime like yeah. they're working, and I don't believe that we can financially sustain. Yeah, us paying overtime pay is not it's a reasonable solution, long-term solution. And there's, and there's really, honestly, there's nobody to answer to. I mean, there's, there's, we're, we're putting this, we're putting this money out there and well, nobody really accountable for it except for us and, we, and I, I like the idea of having someone that's staffed that answers to him and answers well, I think the people to that we are employing or contracting are accountable at this time whoever those people well, are so well, they are not, there's so I'm not sure yeah. well uh, like I said, I've talked with our, our local police chief, I've talked with our sheriff, I've talked with GEMA representative, Homeland Security representative, and they all feel like this is a good move for our school system. I've talked with other superintendents that have made this same transition. They've spoken very positive about it. I think it puts uh, the Coffee County Board of Education in control of, of uh, your elementary school security and system security. Thank you, Dr. Lee. All right, thank you.
Are you asking this to put on the consent agenda or are you? I would like it on the consent agenda, but if we need to. Right. Is everybody good with that? Let's get it moved. All right. Now you just wanted something to be more detailed because you didn't want to have it so late. That's a little I'm different situation than the I have. Well, I think right. they're both fairly important. Well, I think they are too, but this is a little, little bit different. Do we have any audience participation? It's nice. At this time, I would ask the board to move to an executive session to discuss personnel and also real estate. Make your motion to move to the executive session. Ms. Johnson. Second by Ms. Miller, any discussion? All in favor? Yes. 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 Yes